Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Psalm 101. And uh, Luther called the Psalm as David's mirror of a monarch. And uh, we see that uh, uh, though the themes of the Psalm are general, yet uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6 and verse 9 says, David was afraid of the Lord that day and said, how can the ark of the Lord ever come to me? Now, uh, this was the beginning of David's reign. Or in other words, David definitely had an, uh, had a basic understanding that if his worship was true, then the effect would definitely fall upon him and also his household. Because you cannot be a true worshiper and uh, ignore the attributes of God. Because worship is not a program. Worship is not a performance. Worship is not a pattern. But worship is life. And so David understood that if he, he was to really worship God, then his life had to fall in line with his worship. And uh, um, definitely we see uh, he took certain radical, certain drastic steps in order to keep his life aligned with his worship. In uh, Psalm 101 and verse 1, he says, I will sing of your love and justice to you, Lord, I will sing praise. Now, uh, many times we can only sing about God's love because it's so convenient, it's so comfortable and uh, it is so cozy for us. But it is so hard to sing about his justice. This, by this, we can understand that David was looking at God from an uh, unbiased perspective. He was looking at God uh, and his nature, whether it was uh, convenient to him or whether it was uh, uh, inconvenient, whether it was hurting or whether it was uh, bandaging, whatever made it. He, he saw God as God. Now, this is very, very essential for somebody who really wants to walk with the Lord. We need to see God as God in spite of our of its replications, in spite of the consequences. We need to see God as God. When we see God as God truthfully, only then, only then our walk can be right in the sight of God. If we see and if we uh, you know, uh, embrace only those attributes of God which are convenient, which are, um, you know, uh, uh, comfortable for us, then we will have a careless life. When we look at God as God, we will also have joy and also fear. We will, we, we will have, uh, you know, responsibility and also have rights. So we will have a balanced life when we look at God as God. And now coming to second verse, he says, I will be careful to lead a blameless life when you will come to me. I will conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. Now, this is the most, most difficult thing. It is very easy to have a certain religious or a certain kind of righteous life on the outlook um, when we are outside of uh, outside of our homes. Because, uh, you know, it's, it's so common and so prevalent that the moment people uh, step out, outside the threshold of their house, they begin to act, they begin to wear uh, upon them a guise uh, of righteousness. And uh, uh, we, we can easily fool people around. We can easily, uh, you know, uh, be on the good books, good records of people around because, um, you know, it's a very temporary thing. But when it comes to our house, our home or our house is the place where we live our original lives, especially when nobody is there to watch us in our homes. When we are by ourselves, when there is no watchdog and when there is nobody uh, who, who keeps uh, in track uh, uh, when in our secret homes, in our secret lives, that's that's our genuine place especially you know it is more possible that people fall in pleasure than people fall in pain very few people fa fall in pain because uh, I I when we are put into painful situations we cry out to the lord there is a prayerful attitude there is an attitude of retrospecting our lives there is an attitude wherein we come to the lord again and again and beseech for his mercy but when it is pleasure when there is bounty, when there is plenty around us, 
that is where we tend to forget God. But the psalmist, the, uh, uh, David, was very cautious about his home. And he says, I have conducted the affairs of my home uh, with a blameless intention. And so he was very cautious about his home. A Christian is called to be cautious about his home, especially Paul writing to Titus. He says, you know, you, uh, our, uh, our families are, uh, are, are very crucial because when we fail as a family, then we are not worthy to do any kind of ministry. When we fail as a family, then our prayers are not accepted by the Lord. Peter writes, when we fail as a family, um, you know, our testimonies have no effect on the Gentile world. So our families are very crucial. Our homes are very crucial. And uh, that's what uh, um, uh, David is telling here, that he was very, very cautious about his house. Uh, and uh, in verse 3, he says, I will not look with uh, approval on anything uh, that is vile. Uh, I hate the faithless uh, people, what the faithless people do, um, uh, and I will have no part in it. Now, what do the faithless people do? Uh, they, they will uh, keep wild things in their house. They will agree for worldly things to get along in their house. The reason they get along is because they don't have this right understanding that God is sovereign. God is all seeing and God will pull me to account one day. But um, uh, somebody who has faith that God exists, who has faith uh, uh, that, that God is real, God is always and God is sovereign, God will call us to account. And this is not just an intellectual knowledge, but this is a spiritual awakening. When we really know who God is, then this revelation of God will transcend to change our living style. It will transcend to change the way we conduct the affairs of our house. And uh, David just didn't know about God intellectually, but he knew about God uh, in revelation. He knew about God um, with, with, with an awakening in his heart. And that's why it was not just something uh, that he considered religious, but he practically changed his life uh, to fall in line with uh, uh, what uh, he believed. So if our faith is true, then our life will change in line with our faith. If our faith is only intellectual, then we will believe, we will, uh, you know, proclaim something, we will, uh, we will acclaim something, and we will portray something, but we will live in a very different kind. And then verse 4, he says, the purpose of the heart shall be far from me. I will have nothing to do with what is evil. Now he's talking about, um, you know, people around, and he says, I will cut away all those who are perverse, or in other words, who do not have the fear of God in their hearts. And in verse 5, he says, uh, whoever slanders their neighbor in secret, I will put to silence. Now, when he says, I will put to silence, that means this is a habit that he doesn't have or th that he condemns in his own house. Now, this is very, very difficult because, you know, uh, uh, the uh, morsels of uh, malice, the morsels of gossip go very deep down, Proverbs says, and they are very tasty. So, gossip is very tasty, but he says, if somebody has malice against his neighbor and uh, he gossips, about this, then I will cut them off. I will hold them uh, to account. I will, I will put them to silence. I will not uh, uh, get along with them because you know he understood that God will call me to account. I, I don't want to hurt God. I don't want to, um, you know, deal with this God irreverently. And so he recognized that God was always with him. And so he kept his conduct very clear. And in verse 6, he says, My eyes are on the faithful in the land, that they may dwell with me. Those whose walk is blameless will minister before me. Or in other words, as a king, he was telling, you know, those who are around me, those who have to be my pact, uh, or those who are on my team, on the roles, uh, that uh, my, my fellowship around all those people also i will scrutinize i will filter not just on talent not just on uh, um, uh, based on some kind of uh, professional technical leverage but i will look upon them from a spiritual vantage point and i will filter them and i will uh, sue them um, uh, aside based on their gossip oh what a what a great uh, uh, measurement uh, and what a great uh, um, uh, threshold this man has and he says uh, um, I will see that those whose walk is blameless only they are worthy to minister to me because I don't want uh, somebody uh, who is not right with the Lord to be on my team because I want my whole team to reflect the fear of the Lord 
and uh, going forward in verse 7 he says nobody who practices deceit will be in my house and uh, uh, whoever speaks falsely uh, such kind of person will not stand in my presence or um, Psalm 1 um, he was really practicing it that he was not with mockers not with scorners not with the ungodly but he gave himself to uh, the fellowship of the godly people and then uh, he goes on to say uh, in the final verse uh, he says in verse 8 every morning I will put them to silence. So he recognized that even though he is very, very extra cautious, there can creep in these worldly things. There can creep in this, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, things that are hurting or that uh, are not reverential towards the Lord. And he says that in spite of all these things, uh, when these things creep in, every morning I am on this work. Every morning I silence the work of the enemy. Now, if he, is, if he has to silence it in his house, first he has to do it in, in his own heart. But what a beautiful step uh, this Old Testament man was taking, that he was silencing all this violence or all these ungodly things every morning how much more how much more should we be cautious be, be belonging to the new covenant and apostle paul also uh, he was uh, writing to uh, timothy and he says second second timothy chapter 2 and verse 14 keep reminding god's people of these things uh, uh, so that they don't quarrel about words so it's he doesn't say just preach and leave but he says keep reminding because in spite of earnest preaching in spite of vehement prayer in spite of all the efforts that we can do sin will creep in somehow and so we need to be vigilant and cautious at every every stage in our lives and then verse 16 he says avoid godless chat, uh, chatter now this is an advice to uh, somebody who is serving the lord who has been um, uh, trained by apostle paul who has uh, a great uh, uh, you know uh, gift given by the lord uh, uh, a gift of grace uh, given by the lord for ministry and with all of these things, there is a possibility that is prone to godless chatter. And that's why exclusive rights be careful about this. And in verse 19, he says, you know, everyone who who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. Yeah, so that means your confession, your prayer, your worship, and all of these vocal service to the Lord are not without consequence. But if you are offering something to the Lord, then that should turn you from wickedness. Only then that's genuine. And in verse 21 to 23, he says, uh, if you live this kind of life, then you are a vessel meat unto the master's use uh, so that he can be glorified in and through us. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the life of David. Help us also to be extra cautious and extra, extra, oh Lord, vigilant so that after all that we've done, Satan and sin and self can still, uh, oh Lord, seep in. And so help us to be constantly vigilant and uh, radical and dependent upon you. Jesus' wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm.